Hi, I'm in Santa Barbara, California. It's a chilly morning and I'm in a canyon, kind of at a, I call it a glamp ground. I'm sitting on the steps of my cabin and I'm at a Sony event and Sony's at it again. It seems like it was only a month ago when Sony introduced the A9 camera. Well, on this trip, they surprised us with the addition of two new lenses. Another G Master lens, the 16 to 35 millimeter 2.8 G Master lens, which goes along with the other zoom lenses that are G Masters. This is the 7200, this is 24 to 70. Uh, both of these lenses I own. And don't forget, they also introduced a 100 to 400 millimeter G Master lens, which uh, will be delivered in July sometime. So now, actually, there's four G Master zoom lenses actually rounding out quite nicely, specifically for almost any photographer, a vocal length that would be needed for just about anything you could want. The new 1635, quite a lens, very light, beautifully designed, typical G Master, 2.8 aperture throughout. It also has an 11 blade aperture so that the Boku on this is really, really nice. Um, I've had the opportunity to shoot with this. You'll see some photos in the uh, report below. And it was hard to make this thing flare. There's all sorts of new uh, coatings on the lenses. They've done a remarkable job with the motors inside to make the, uh, the lens work in a, in a silent fashion. And I'm just really amazed at what I was able to shoot in my short one day with this lens. Um, and quite impressed. Uh, the 1635 goes with the 24 70 and a 70 to 200 and they're all designed something along the lines of similar uh, fashion. Um, one of the things that each one of these lenses has on it is a focus hold button. It's nothing new but it's very nice specifically when you're working now with the new joystick on the back of the A9 camera which is what I use to shoot a lot of my photographs yesterday and you know you can move your focus point to where you want, lock in your focus, hold the focus lock button, which also can be programmed for a number of other functions, and away you go. Very versatile camera, very versatile lens, 16 to 35 millimeter lens. It is going to be available at the end of August for a price of $21.99 US, and it'll be $29.99.99 in Canadian. I'll have the prices below with some of the specs if you want to check it out. Also below are some photographs which you can zoom into and uh, take a look at the uh, quality of what I was able to capture. Remember, we only had it for a short day. We had some uh, landscape stuff we shot. In addition, we also did some uh, sporting type uh, events and uh, it was a good chance to try the A9 out again at 20 frames per second. You can take a look at some of the bicyclers and the horse jumpers to see what I was able to do. I really am impressed because you can shoot directly into the sun and not have any uh, major glare and uh, lens flare. So that's pretty cool. But then they surprised us and gave us the announcement of a 12 to 24. Now, this has been something that the other guys have had for a while in the range of 12 to 24, 11 to 24. But this one is really compact. Look at the size of that. And it is so light, it's almost hard to describe. It's at least half the weight from what the competitor's lenses are. All internal focusing, so all short draw as far as the zoom goes. And what's really remarkable is how sharp this lens is from corner to center. Um, I was trying to look at all sorts of images and you'll see the same ones below. I shot a tree and you can take a look at uh, F4. By the way, this is an F4 lens and it's not a G Master. Let me point that out. It's not a G Master lens. It's a G lens, um, but it is extremely sharp, easy to work, good close focusing, great when the depth of field goes down on it. So there are some samples wide open. I believe I actually put it at f4.5 in the image below so you can take a look at the leaves in the corner and also the center and see what the focus looks like on, your, 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 on the images down below. Um, once again, this is not a G Master lens, so I believe this has um, eight blades in the aperture so that uh, it's not like a G Master with 11 but uh, you're not really going for Boku if you're shooting with this lens, you're going for wide angle. The beauty of this, and the more I shoot these days, the more I really like wide angle, is at the widest angle, 
you can do new things. It draws uh, perspective into the image. So as you're shooting landscapes, specifically landscapes, uh, you can do some really nice composition leading you with leading lines and um, you know the environment in itself. So uh, this is definitely going to go in my uh, camera bag. This lens will be available at the end of July. I believe uh, orders can be taken for it now. We're looking at a $16.99 uh, price tag, US dollars, and uh, not a bad price for a lens like this. So in my arsenal and where I'm going with things these days, as you all know, I own Sony equipment. I believe in it. I've been shooting with it a lot. So I'm gonna have my A7R2. My A9 camera, which should be delivered by the time this video is uh, posted, I hope. I'm going to be adding this 12 to 24. The 2470, which is already here, the 16 to 35, the 2470, and the 100 to 400. Now, you may be saying, well, these are zooms. These aren't your normal zooms. Number one, they're expensive. With the price tag comes the performance you'd expect from an expensive lens. So it's a good lens, good setup. I do have a number of primes for my Sony system, but frankly, if I'm heading to Iceland, I'm gonna throw probably four lenses, maybe the, the, the fifth lens in if I'm shooting long and have just about everything I need to cover, just about anything I, I, I would have to cover, um, specifically even wildlife. And on the 70 to 200 and the 100 to 400, I can either put a 1.4 or a 2X extender on and even use those lenses more uh, in the long range. So now that I think about it, I think my kit will be 12 to 24, 16 to 35, 24 to 70, and the 100 to 400. I really don't need the aperture for most of what I'm shooting. I think I'll reserve the 70 to 200 for things uh, where I want uh, Boku background and shooting short range, such as portraits and uh, maybe some stuff on the street and things like that. So anyway, Sony's at it again. I'm sure they're not done. One of the things about Sony is uh, they seem to know what they need to succeed. It was hinted at us, you know, specifically as the A9 discussion started, that they know they need long lenses and there's smiles on their faces. So for Sony to succeed specifically with the A9, with all the fun specs that it has, the lens lineup has to accommodate the pro wildlife and sports shooter. Let's just put it this way. They know that and probably it won't be too long, I hope, in the future where I can sit down and do another video and show you some long glass. And when that begins to happen, you know, the opportunities for Sony really, really open up. Um, they're in the number two position now, overtaking Nikon. Uh, one of the things is I've written in my ranatorial, if I was a betting man, I would put my money on Sony. And I don't think that would change today. Sony's going places. They know how to treat the customer. They're working with the right customers. And the files, images, and their products are all top notch. So give it some consideration if you're looking for a system, specifically if you're thinking about moving from DSLR. I moved from DSLR a number of years ago and I've never looked back. Uh, the information I get in the viewfinders on my Sonys, I get all the stuff I need such as histogram and level and uh, uh, focus points and the A9, speaking of focus points, tracks so darn fast on the bicyclers and the skateboarders, which are in the images below. <laughs> All I had to do was find the subject. I pushed the button halfway down. It tracked. I just started shooting, and each shot is in perfect focus. Uh, so I was quite surprised. And by the way, the way I shot those images was I had variable ISO. I locked my shutter speed at about a 2,000th of a second with an f-stop of around 8. Let the ISO move, and uh, away I went, 20 frames per second. Let's just say I can fill up cards pretty fast. but. You know, in the end, you just need that one picture, and I was able to find that one picture when you're shooting things moving fast that you can't do that with any of the other cameras. So anyway, I'm very, very happy to be here. Thank you, Sony, for inviting all the press down and uh, my colleagues. And once again, thanks for impressing us. Um, look forward to our next invite to the next event, and uh, can't wait to see what surprises you have for us then. So in the meantime, 
12 to 24, 16 to 35 new editions. One will be in July, the other will be in August of this year. Also coming in July is the 100 to 400, so it's going to be a fun summer of photography. I can't wait to see what's next. Anyway, from Santa Barbara, California, sitting in front of my glamping cabin, I want to say thank you and thank you too for visiting the Luminous Landscape.